Hello, I'm Laura Audrey, one of the Knowledge Exchange Managers here for AHDB Dairy covering Devon and Cornwall. And today I'm in North Devon with our strategic dairy farm host, David Luxton. David, do you want to give us a bit of an overview about the farm at Newlands here? Yeah, well here at Newlands, we are a fully housed um, robotic dairy unit, milking 180 cows through three robots on a DWL guided system. The shed's been in for three and a half years and it's just starting to work well now. It's been a challenge, hence the reason we joined the SDF programme to help with some of our areas of weakness. And um, things we've improved in the last 12 months are some dry cow transition management with the help of AHDB. Um, we've also started classifying the cows. We've been pedigree for decades, but we decided to go to the next stage and start classifying. Earlier in the autumn, we had a dry cow transition management meeting here at Newlands Farm, where we had Heaven Richards, an independent nutrition consultant, come down on farm. Heaven had more of a holistic approach to transition management, as obviously we quite often always focus on the diet of the cows, but there are multiple other aspects at play. His key take home points for the day were to make sure that you do still look at your forage, look at the quality and the mineral analysis of it, and again, the presentation of how that feed is available. Another thing is also looking at the energy density of that forage that you are feeding those dry cows in the transition period. We also then looked at the cow environment, things such as your shed spacing and your layout, and again, making sure that there's enough feed space and barrier space for cows to be able to get to the diet. We also spoke about access to water. Water is one of the cheapest additives in any dry cow ration. Access is really important and cows need at least 10 centimetre trough spacings. Simple things such as turning your trough 90 degrees to allow more access for cows is a really simple, cheap and effective way that you can achieve this on farm. One of the key aspects we spoke about was what the cows were actually being fed in terms of their diet. We obviously looked at sort of the energy density and what were some of the changes that you decided to make as a team here at Newlands? Um, I think we spent too long trying to overcomplicate the dry cow ration with good quality silages, trying to water it down with straw and food through dusts and things like that to help with milk fevers. Um, we've actually gone back to basics of something we used to do and we started feeding them haylage and that's also fed haylage at the front here and haylage in the pens, whereas beforehand we were feeding two different diets. So we've now got the consistency of the diet and they have a dry cow nut twice a day at the front and the transition blend in the pens. And since that, we've seen huge improvements. And other management aspects that you're doing, when are you introducing your dry cows and your heifers as one group here in the shed? Uh, the in-calf heifers are introduced into the dry cow group at least six weeks beforehand, if not longer. I like to give them a longer period in with the cows so they get used to the bigger dominant cows. And interestingly enough, we had one the other day that hadn't, made it into the shed, went straight into the carbon pens, straight into the new dairy unit, and she's not doing as well as her cohorts in the group. Now, through the diet changes and some of the other aspects, have you noticed that there's been a reduction in metabolic disorders and things like transition disease? Yeah, I would say that there's been a huge reduction. We, we Our instance of milk fevers have reduced, and um, we have had one in the last four months, but that was down to a bad calving and twins. Retained placentas have reduced, if not disappeared altogether, and they're coming into the herd and going on a lot better, peaking a lot quicker. And fertility's always been good in that stage where it should be, but they've just, they're coming in better, and as you can probably see from the video behind that, they're looking in a good condition and they have got a good room and fill on the hay, which is good. And David works really closely with his vet Lauren for body condition scoring. How important have you found mon monitoring body condition score of those cows and heifers in that dry period in terms of their success and transition? I think you need to monitor it as, as much as you can. If, if you don't monitor the condition, you, you can't sort of help with the other issues that would arise from it. We body condition score at PNC, PDs, and we do a dry off PD before they come down out of the shed and any other times they hit the vet. Um, what we are now finding is we haven't got later lactation cows, so our body condition scoring is more consistent and as it should be. I think one of the key things we spoke about at the transition management meeting was to avoid really thin cows and to avoid really fat cows and that we were aiming for a body condition score between 2.75 and 3.5 going into that dry period. You can find more resources on body condition scoring at ahdb.org.uk. David has now started uh, baling and growing a lot more haylage as part of the dry cow diet. 
David, apart from obviously looking at the nutrition aspects, are there any other things that you've found that are beneficial from having haylage as the dry cow feed? I think it, it's a labour saving product as well. I, it, it's taking longer now because we're making it and carrying it. But in the winter, I'm not messing about with wagons. Anybody else can feed up the dry cows for me. Um, it doesn't go off in front of the dry cows, so therefore there's no sorting as well. We feed them nuts twice a day, so therefore it helps to encourage them up to eat. It's just a general, it's just made the dry cone management so much easier and practical, really. So going forward, we obviously want to have a consistent ration throughout this 12-month period. What, have, what steps have you taken to ensure that you're going to be able to have that consistent supply of forage for 12 months and avoid any issues in terms of transition feeding? I have 20 acres here on Newlands, which gets treated differently to the rest of the ground. So that is purely fertiliser cut three times a year when it's overgrown and gone to seed so it's always cut and dried and then baled and I've also taken on another 15 acres this year to do the same with so I have a dedicated 35 acres purely for dry coats. We started using one of the transition records here at Newlands Farm so we could plot some of the incidences of metabolic disorders on the farm and collecting this data how are we going to be using this data on farm and what changes do you think this is going to also help you in terms of your bottom line of profitability and productivity of the farm i think it's just these sort of things it just helps you focus and you can just see where there's a problem and then you can track that problem back and try and analyze why that why it happened and what you can do to rectify it and how have you seen your fertility and conception rates and return to service since you've made these changes on farm? Because ultimately, obviously, fertility is, is a big driver for, for any dairy business. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was good beforehand, but I think it's probably increased better now, purely down to the fact that cows are coming in and eating better, so therefore we're getting a lot more hold into first service. Submission rate is still running at 80% for the 100 days anyway. We spoke a little bit about how cow factors such as body condition scoring and lameness could also play a vital impact within your farm's success with transition. We spoke a lot about how obviously the fat pad and the hoof of a cow is really important and that if a cow does lose too much body condition score during that transition period, she will mobilise fat within her body which can then lead to an increase in lameness. What have you been doing here at Newlands Farm, David, to help combat that in terms of keeping body condition scores where they need to be with the diet? The dairy cows are south, they've had maize added to the diet. And now we've had maize in the diet, it's helped the overall lameness and the condition um, by maintaining that fat pad in the foot, they are a lot better. We've also started doing, since Sarah's come back from having the little ones, we had a foot trimmer in doing some routine foot trimming for us and he started doing a 40 day clip for us. Sarah's now started doing that 40 day trim and we've noticed the difference in that already. We also do a dry off trim which makes a big difference so we tend to find it works well. Thank you David for taking the time to talk to us today. If you'd like to know more about David's journey as one of our strategic dairy farmers you can find out more about Newlands Farm on the AHDB website under the strategic dairy farm section.